welcome you all for an overview of theories of discrimination by national research council of united states introduction discrimination is the act of making unfair distinctions between people based on the groups classes or other categories such as race gender age or sexual orientation discrimination especially occurs when individuals or groups are unfairly treated it also involves restricting members of one group from opportunities or privileges that are available to members of another group to be able to measure the existence of racial discrimination it is necessary to have a theory of how discrimination might occur National Research Council of United States addresses the problems of discrimination and provides insight into the conceptualization of discrimination. Their purpose is to help researchers think through the models of discrimination and analytic methods of measurement. The definition of discrimination encompasses both individual behaviors and institutional practices. According to the research council there are four types of discrimination which leads to various mechanisms of discrimination The four types of theories of discrimination according to National Research Council are intentional discrimination subtle discrimination statistical profiling and discriminative practices in an organizational culture The first three types of theories involve behaviors of individuals and organization. The council states these discriminatory practices operate within the domains of education, employment, housing, criminal justice and health. That is, these type of discriminations can be found in education system, employment process, inside the house and dealing with issues like criminal justice and health. discrimination can be sometimes direct or indirect like subtle or unconscious it may also occur as the result of institutional procedures rather than individual behaviors let me explain intentional explicit or open discrimination in this type of discrimination an individual behaves negatively towards members of another racial group by means of verbal antagonism avoidance segregation physical attack and extermination verbal antagonism includes racial criticism or comments which constitutes a clear form of opposition in schools workplaces and neighborhoods avoidance covers choosing of one's own racial group over interaction with another racial group Avoiding another person because of race can be more damaging and direct abuse. People of this discrimination self-segregate themselves and can lead to long-term exclusion and segregation. Segregation occurs when a certain racial group is excluded from access to institutions. That is, they cannot claim to study in the institution they wish. The most common examples include denial of equal education housing employment and health care on the basis of race physical attacks and hate crimes are seen as an overt or open forms of discrimination extermination or mass killings based on ethnic animus do occur thus explicit discrimination is expressed through verbal and non-verbal antagonism and through racial avoidance and denial of certain opportunities because of race subtle unconscious automatic implicit or closed discrimination subtle discrimination is encouraged by differential media portrayals of non-whites versus white Subtle discrimination can also be felt in housing, education and occupations. The psychological literature describes this subtle discrimination as a set of unconscious beliefs and associations that affect the attitudes and behaviors of different racial groups. Members of this discrimination are unconsciously categorized on the basis of race, gender and age. They face an internal conflict resulting from the societal rejection. The result is subtle, 
that goes underground and continues to shape people's cognitive, affective and behavioral responses. These subtle forms of racism are indirect, automatic, ambiguous and ambivalent. This includes negative stereotype associations and discriminatory behavioral impulses. In other words, categorization by race can activate stereotypes and can lead to subtle forms of discriminatory behaviors. Thus, all these constitute barriers to full equality of treatment. Statistical discrimination and profiling In this discrimination, an individual uses overall beliefs about a group to make decisions about an individual. These perceived ideas are assumed to apply to the individual. For example, an employer may judge a black job applicant on the basis of group averages rather than on the basis of his or her own qualifications. This discrimination is based on the basis of beliefs that reflect the actual distributions of characteristics of different groups. Thus, it uses group characteristics to make decisions about individuals. An individual is treated differently because of information associated with his or her racial group membership. Members of this racial groups may adapt behaviors to signal their differences from group averages. For example, non-white business people who want to signal their trustworthiness may dress impeccably or perfect in expensive business suits. Similarly, non-white parents who want their children to get into a first-rate college may signal their middle-class background by sending their children to an expensive private school. Thus, the practice of statistical discrimination can impose costs on members of the targeted group even when those individuals are not themselves the victims of explicitly discriminatory treatment. Thus, it may affect an individual in a way that does not focus on his or her own capabilities. Organizational Process Organizations tend to reflect many discriminations as the people operate within the different organizations. Organizational rules sometimes evolve out of past histories that are not easily reconstructed. It may lead to differential racial treatment and the result can be discriminatory. An example of this type of discrimination can be found in banks and other lending institutions which openly have neutral rules regarding higher level of loan refusals for persons in lower income blacks than for equivalent white applicants. Practices like this do not entail intentional discrimination but the outcome is the exclusion of certain groups. However, the council does not wish to condemn any specific organizational process. Each situation needs to be analyzed with regard to the particular history and reasonable organizational needs of a specific institution. Nonetheless, an organization has been found guilty of intentional discrimination for failing to compensate for the unconscious automatic discrimination of its employees. To conclude, thus these different types of discrimination can occur at different venues and different ways in which it can have an effect. These theories provide the effects of race-based discrimination and introduce new ideas to those engaged in measuring discrimination. These theories also demonstrate the methods used to assess discrimination within particular domains and help ending discrimination around the world.